Welcome to the Nick Blevins Family Ministry Podcast. Our goal is to help you maximize your church's potential. You'll hear from top leaders in children's, student, and family ministry about the principles and practices they use. Now here's your host, Nick Blevins. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 202 of the podcast. In this episode, I talk with Brittany Nelson, and we talk all about her church staff. She actually doesn't work on staff, but her husband does in youth ministry, and she has a website for Kidman Resources. But we talk a lot about how their church staff Many of them caught COVID-19 and some of the student ministry did and what that meant and how that changed their plans and their gatherings and things like that, which was not really the whole purpose of the original interview. The original interview was all about Deeper Kidmen, the site that Brittany created and runs to help resource children's pastors and children's ministries and things like that. But we talk about both of those things in this interview. So you can get all the links and notes and all those things at nickblevins.com slash episode 202. Before we jump in, I want to let you know that with Ministry Boost, we are helping churches kind of create and give boxes to their families every month, putting your ministry in a box, giving it to families to help boost engagement at home, boost conversations, and help them engage with the content that you're probably putting online. So whether you're only online or partially online, these ministry boxes are a great way to share the curriculum, empower parents to lead their kids at home, or maybe put it more on the kids to lead. And there's kids challenge cards that churches are creating and so there's two things that we've created to help with that one is the ministry box bundle it's a 25 dollars bundle you can pre-order it now it'll release next week if you're listening to this podcast when it comes out and that includes all the templates and box designs and activity card templates and email scripts and communication scripts and processes that you can take and adjust to do this in your ministry and then the other thing is we found a great lead and are working with a company that's not a public company this way to create custom printed designed boxes. So imagine a a box that's a foot wide, about nine inches deep, three inches tall, and you can custom print the entire outside of the box, the bottom, the sides, the top, with your design, your logo. We've got some template designs that you can use if you would like, uh, and then put your logo on it. And so all of that is gonna be available as well. So you can get the bundle if you want, that's a separate thing. You can order boxes through this and you'll get them cheaper than you'll get anywhere else, which is great. And cause we've worked out a deal there and you can learn more about all of that at ministryboost.org. We're actually spinning it all up as I record this, trying to get that store up and running because if you want to order boxes for October, November, December, or just October, uh, you have to order by September 1st. So if you want to act on this and get in on it, you'll have to move fast. Make sure you check out ministryboost.org. Join the Ministry Boost Facebook group. That's another place where we're communicating about it. And things are happening fast. So even if you get there and there's nothing there, keep an eye out. It'll be there soon. But just want to give you a heads up about that in case you want to get in and, you know, create boxes that you're going to send to your families. My church is. We're doing a bag the first month and then we're going to be doing the custom design box. Uh, after that and so we're really excited about that but enough about that let's jump into this conversation with Brittany Nelson about how her church staff navigated the COVID-19 and a few of them catching that as well as Deeper Kidman and how she resources kids pastors. Today I'm talking with Brittany Nelson welcome to the podcast Brittany. Hey Nick thanks for having me. You bet as we uh, get started here tell us about yourself your family uh, your church little overview of Deeper Kidman kind of give us a picture. Yeah, so my name is Brittany Nelson. I work at a church um, just northeast of Atlanta. We're about 45 minutes, an hour outside of the city, Celebration Church. Um, My husband is the youth pastor there, and I am on staff in an administrative role. Um, So I help with social media. I help with sermon research. I do some volunteer coordination for our Sunday morning services. Um, And we have been there for about two years now. Um, we also have our brand new parents. Um, we had our first baby girl in back in February. And so we are learning what it looks like to be a ministry family, which is really fun. Um, we have done ministry as a couple for so long. And so we're really excited now to do ministry as a family, even though in the midst of all this COVID stuff, there's not a whole Mm -hmm. lot that we've been able to do in person. Um, so that's a little bit about, but our family. And then in addition to working on staff and volunteering um, with the children and youth ministry, I also run Deeper Kidmen, which is a children's ministry resource website. Um, it's kind of like Teachers Pay Teachers, where there are mm-hmm. leaders from all over the country who are submitting resources 
um, and lesson plans and games and event ideas that they've created for their ministry. Um, and they are sharing them through Deeper Kidmen. And so it's really awesome. It's been so much fun to, um, um, to, to be part of Deeper Kidmen and to get it started, get it going and see how it's grown. Um, and just to see all the creative ideas that leaders have. Um, I'm really excited and thankful that I get to get to share what people create um, for their ministries that help them serve kids and lead families. So, Mm -hmm. and I want to talk more about that. We'll save that part for the end and we'll start with kind of the journey your church has been on the last number of months, very similar in many ways to a lot of churches, but you've got some unique parts of that story. And I'd love to just start with what, like, what did it look like when you made the shift online back in March for kids ministry and student ministry? What did you all do? Sure. Um, so for youth ministry, I'm really familiar with that since my husband's the one in charge of yeah. it. Um, he started kind of like a an online Bible study. So he used Google Sites to create a Bible study around the book of John. Um, and each week it would have a couple of questions. It would have scripture passages from the book of John to read. And then he, I think, linked a few worship songs that he was listening to or that he thought went well with um, the teaching for that day. And then once a week, he would Zoom with students to talk about the Bible study. Um, so that was one of the things that he did. And he also, he did his programming for middle school and high school on Zoom as well. So Sunday nights is when we have high school. And so he would do that and play games and still give talks and then break out into small groups. Um, and he did the same thing with our middle schoolers on Wednesday nights. And then for kids, we really, um, our children's pastor did a great job of reaching out to parents and trying to equip parents. And so she created a specific page on our church's website that she updates weekly um, with the Sunday morning lesson, with the video, with activity ideas, discussion questions, and just resources for parents to kind of do church at home with their kids. And so she did a really, really good job of um, kind of making sure that parents felt equipped and felt supported to lead their kids in their faith at home. Now, these two questions probably go together, but did anything with the online approach change? Did you all change anything uh, you know, in children's ministry or student ministry, maybe because it wasn't working or you just want to try something new? And, and I don't know if you, or you, if you know of this, but with student ministry too, or even kids ministry, I know most leaders I talked to saw a you know, pretty sharp drop off. Our student ministry yeah. did Zoom groups, and it's actually pretty good all the way through May. Or almost all the yep. way through May. And that's when that fell off a cliff. Kids content and engaging with it online <laughs> fell off a cliff after Easter. Um, yep. So I'm just wondering, did you guys change anything? Did you experience that same kind of, you know, lag yes. and engagement? Yes, we definitely did. I think by the end of the school year, students and parents alike were kind of zoomed out and we're uh-huh. just, you know, done with Zoom between school and um, and church opportunities. And so, yeah, my husband pulled back on the zoom meetings and more had like zoom hangouts, I guess, or like tried to um, use things like Jackbox or, you know, Netflix party, watch parties and um, play games online with students. Or he just recently last week had a uh, Mario Kart party with students online with his, (laughs) with the Nintendo switch. And so just finding different ways, kind of pulling back a little bit on some of the more maybe like, biblical teaching side of things and really focusing on fellowship and just finding, trying to find ways to give students um, the opportunity to interact and to connect with friends that they haven't seen in a while. Um, And then with kids, we definitely pulled back to, um, I know our children's pastor was doing zoom meetings, like 30 minute kind of small group zoom meetings on Sunday mornings, just to, as a chance for the kids to see each other. And I know the attendance for that kind of went down too. And so she tried a few different other things um, that was small group specific or, um, you know, was even shorter time span. But yeah, we definitely saw a drop off in those online um, interactions and we're in Georgia. And so we were one of the first States to really kind of open back up again. And so even in May, we started having some social distance um, events, whether with youth or kids and, our, actually, our first outdoor service that we gathered back in person together was May 31st. And so um, we kind of started dipping our toes back into the <laughs> the in-person stuff at the end of May, beginning of June. Yeah. And I know a number of churches that did, you know, right around that time frame. A lot of them were like yours in areas where, you know, cases hadn't been high and, and different things like that. And then you 
you met in person again, I'm assuming inside the building late June. Is that right? Yes. So June 21st was our very first in-person service. We were back inside the building. Um, we were so excited to be back. There were lots of people that were excited to be back too. Um, and we have three services on a Sunday morning, a 9, 10, and 11. Our 9 and 11 o'clock services are contemporary and 10 o'clock is traditional. Um, and so it was an exciting Sunday. It was Father's Day. Um, it was also actually the day that we dedicated our daughter. So it was a big oh, day that's <laughs> in awesome. our house as well. So that was really fun. But that was our first first Sunday service um, in person, indoors. And yeah, we had to figure out what that was going to look like. And there were lots of, you know, lots of discussion around protocols and hand sanitizer and, <laughs> and masks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'd love to hear some of it. Like, what were some of the things you did differently? And of course, most of the listeners are leading children's ministry or student ministry, you know, to, to open, you know, what was different? Sure. Yeah. So that first Sunday, um, we didn't have children yet, um, but we did have youth. And so we had, um, my husband just set up, <laughs> set up chairs in the room that he uses for, um, youth on Sunday mornings and put chairs six feet apart <laughs> and encouraged the, um, the kids to social distance as much as possible. Um, students aren't so great at social distancing. I'm sure <laughs> the people who are listening mm -hmm. know and understand that very well. Um, and it was surprising too. I think he's, cause we sent out before the services, um, kind of like an RSVP system. We didn't require an RSVP or a registration to attend, but just so that we could, as a staff kind of get a head count of what, what was going to be happening, um, and who, how many people were going to be coming. And I think he got a response of like, oh, there, there'll be 20 students who come to Sunday morning. And we're like, okay, like that's a good size. That's a good number. You know, we can handle that. We can stay six feet apart in that room. Um, and then that morning he ended up having 36, <laughs> which was great. You know, it was so <laughs> yeah. much fun to see all those students again, but he kept having to pull out chairs and be like, well, okay, maybe scoot a little bit closer, but don't touch each other, you know, <laughs> don't breathe on each other. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was, it was fun to to see all them together and to get them back. And then when we started with children's ministry, um, it was shortly after that. But we just started it at our nine o'clock service. Um, so there was only only the nine o'clock service offered children's ministry. Um, the other services did not. And then we also did only elementary. Um, we just didn't have the volunteers. We didn't we couldn't think of a way to social distance with babies and, and preschoolers. Um, it just wasn't going to be safe for the kids or the volunteers based yeah. on the data and the science at the time. And so we opened up with just elementary um, and just at one service. Did people, do you feel like families showed up with their young kids in service? No. <laughs> I didn't think so, but I was few, wondering. Yeah, we, yeah, we had very few um families with kids show up and then there were I think we were the only ones there with a baby <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> say did you show up with your daughter because, yeah <laughs> yeah so we showed up with our daughter she sat through the beginning of the service and then we dedicated her and then I sat out in the lobby and watched the service from the lobby after that um but otherwise no all our families with young kids stayed home and and watched the service online mm-hmm now I feel like we've buried the lead, you know, because a big part of the story here is that some of your staff, including your husband, tested positive for COVID-19. So then you had to shut things down. So walk us through a little bit of yeah. that. Like, uh, and from our conversation before, it sounds like uh, the testing caught it more than symptoms caught it. But uh, I don't know if that mm -hmm. was true for the whole staff. But how did, like, what happened there? And even right now, you know, you're not gathering. So walk us through that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that June 21st was our first Sunday back. And then we kept going with the Sundays. Things were good, doing good. We didn't see nearly the same numbers um, in terms of attendance that we had before COVID, but we, we saw a decent amount. Um, and then we, my husband was planning a beach trip. So he was going to take a group of our high school students to the beach um, in the middle of July, actually. Yeah. Just last week, the 13th through the 17th are the dates um, that are still on my calendar. It's so sad, <laughs> but he was supposed to take students there. Um, it was the last thing, you know, that hadn't gotten canceled and he rented a house on the beach and had all the talks written and, um, was super excited. The students were pumped. And as we got closer and closer to the, to the date, the numbers in our area just kept rising and kept rising and kept rising. And so he 
just the week before, sent out an email to the parents that said, hey, I'm not requiring it, but I'm strongly recommending go get a COVID test um, just so you know we can go with a clear conscience. And when we get there, we're going to be quarantined together. We're not going to go out anywhere. You know, we're not doing anything. But if some, we are going to be living together. And so he was very transparent and said, you know, when we go on this beach trip, there's not going to be social distancing involved because we're all going to be living in this one giant house. And so since he asked families to go get tested and students, he was like, well, I better go get tested too. And so he went and got tested, but had no symptoms, like no other reason that um, he would have gotten tested other than the fact that he asked families to. And so he got tested on a Monday evening and then we got his results on Thursday that he had tested positive. Um, and so that was four days, four or five days before we were supposed to leave for the trip. And so, of course, that Thursday was a rough night <laughs> in terms of, mm-hmm. you know, having to let the students know, let the parents know. Um, we tried to come up with a way to make the trip still happen of, you know, maybe if our volunteer leaders feel comfortable, you know, leading and taking the students, then Ryan can just zoom in to get to teach the lessons, you know, or if other parents are willing to jump on board as leaders too. Um, but the more that we talked with our senior pastor and a few of our key parents and volunteers, we just realized it wasn't going to be, wouldn't be wise to move forward with the trip. Um, and so um, he had to cancel it. And then in the aftermath of that, you know, because a lot of other students got tested, a lot of um, several of our staff members got tested as well. Um, and so through that, we had three staff members total who tested positive, and there are about seven or eight people on our staff. Um, and then several of our students tested positive as well. Um, from what we've known so far, almost all of them were asymptomatic. There was one that has had some breathing problems or test, chest tightness. Um, but for the most part, everyone in our group was asymptomatic um, that that we know of so far. Um, and so we shut down services for that Sunday, July 12th and July 19th, because half the staff <laughs> was was quarantined and the entire worship team had been exposed. And so they were quarantining as they were waiting on their test results, too. And so um, we stopped in-person services again after just three weeks <laughs> of being back. Um, and, and yeah, closed down services again as kind of waited to see what, what would happen with the staff. And of course, you know, we had a group, group chat with our staff and people are texting in, oh, you know, mine tested negative. I'm part of the special club, you know, <laughs> or, oh, mine's positive. Or let's go quarantine together at the beach. And <laughs> it's just different <laughs> things like that. So it was fun to see, see people's, you know, positivity and optimism, even in kind of a crazy situation. And, and we're really thankful too that everyone was asymptomatic and didn't get sick. Yeah, because I mean, it, you know, a lot of that's not the story for a lot of folks. There was that I don't know where this church was, but that large, larger church where half the staff caught it. And I think their story too was that maybe one person had gone to the hospital, but even that wasn't that bad. But I would say they weren't asymptomatic. You know, a bunch of them mm. had the symptoms, had the you know, uh, you know, deal with that part of it. Um, yeah. And of course, we all know there's there's much much worse too. I'd love to ask mm-hmm. about like what once you knew. You know, you communicate about that student trip, but then you stop services in person. Did you like, you know, the questions that everybody's asking is, uh, what was the plan look like? How'd you communicate? What did you talk contact tracing? Uh, was it as simple yeah. as, hey, some people on staff and have tested positive or, you know what I mean? Like how detailed did you get other people? Obviously sure. you were saying in the church tested positive too, but what did that communication look like? Sure. So um, once we found out that, two or three of the staff members had tested positive. Um, then, you know, our, our communications director um, and our senior pastor were hard at work kind of drafting the communications that would go out pretty quickly um, with details about that. And um, it started out as just an email. And so an email went out to the entire church that just said, hey, you know, two of our staff members have, because at this point we only knew of two, um, two of our staff members have tested positive, you know, out of an abundance of safety, we're going to suspend in-person services for the next two Sundays while the staff quarantines, you know, and we'll let you let you know future details and things like that. And then we also ended up, our pastor recorded a quick video, just one to two minutes that we could include with the email and also post on social media um, and 
and um, those were kind of the biggest, the two biggest things that we did. And then, of course, we fielded a lot of questions through phone calls and stuff at the church or emails back and forth. Um, but we didn't do any sort of contact tracing um, or anything like that. Yeah, and you aren't meeting now through, would you say, September? Yeah, so just this week, actually, um, Tuesday at staff meeting, um, this, you know, July 21st, we met and said, okay, well, you know, now, now what do we do? Do we move forward? And our pastor, um, senior pastor kind of had everyone, everyone on the staff go around and say, well, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And so we all shared and almost everyone on staff kind of agreed that, Hey, maybe, you know, numbers are continuing to rise in our area. We're actually just down the street from a pretty big hospital. Um, and so we, great resource there to be able to connect with them. And they're urging churches in our area to, um, to not gather in large groups. And so we have their, their source of wisdom as well as um, communicating with a lot of other leaders too. And so, yeah, our staff just said, Hey, you know, this is what we think probably need to step back. You know, we're not sure what that timeline looks like, but we think we need to step back and our senior pastor agreed. And just from a lot of the feedback that he had gotten from his advisory team and um, a committee that he's got, you know, put together that has helped us with a lot of these decisions through the whole season of COVID. Um, and so we have decided to continue suspending in-person services until after Labor Day. And at that point, we will reevaluate again. We're not quite ready to say, you know, we're going to start services again because what if things, hopefully they don't, but what if things get even worse, you know, between now and then? Um, and so that's just kind of our next checkpoint is after Labor Day. So we, we are back to online only um, and trying to come up with creative ways to, to do ministry and to connect with people in small groups or in small gatherings and then online as well. Yeah. Well, I want to shift gears and talk about Deeper Kim in like we talked about uh, in the beginning there, and you talked about it, it's like a little bit of it, like a teachers pay teachers. My impression too, uh, just from watching you share that stuff and talk about it, social media, it seems like you love that. Like there's something you just love creating those resources. Yeah. So tell us, tell us a little bit more specifically about the site and like what's on there and, um, how, you know, how people can be also contribute to it and things like that. Sure. So, um, deeper Kidman started, when I felt God calling me to kind of shift my ministry focus. Um, so I was a children's pastor, full-time children's pastor for five years um, at the same church that my husband was at with as a youth pastor. And we um, realized for those after those five years that we loved what we did, but we weren't able to support each other in our ministries the way we wanted to. And we just realized that the level and the pace of ministry that we kept wasn't going to be sustainable for us long term for us to lead separate full time ministries. And so I kind of um, shifted my focus a little bit. And I thought, well, if I can't be a children's pastor, then I want to support children's pastors. And so that's really how Deeper Kidman got started. It started out as just kind of like just a blog where I was like, well, hey, here's what worked for me. You know, maybe somebody will find this helpful, too. Mm -hmm. um, and as a children's pastor, I wrote a lot of the curriculum and the events and things that we used. And so I started sharing some of that, too. Um, from there, just realized, hey, I'm not the only one that's got creative ideas. So how can I create a platform for other leaders to share what they are creating as well? Um, and so that's really how the marketplace on Deeper Kinman got started. Um, and it's been, it's, yeah, it's been a blast. It's a lot of fun. I still get to, still get to blog <laughs> um, and write about things and, um, you know, write about experiences and what's happening in children's ministry. Um, but I also really love being able to share resources and show off what people are creating. Um, every Friday, we give away a free download um, to use in children's ministry, whether it's a volunteer appreciation printable or a planner, um, a prayer guide, an event idea, a game idea, just kind of, it's, you know, it varies week to week. Um, but I love being able to give away creative ideas and kind of spark, spark that innovation in children's ministry. Yeah. What are some, I mean, you have games, you have curriculum, you have like uh, volunteer type resources. Tell us a little bit about uh -huh. the different kinds of things that are on there, both that you create and, and others. Sure. So, um, yeah, we have everything. You know, when people say, well, what kind of resources do you have on Deeper Kidman? I say, if it's a resource that can help a children's pastor be more successful in leadership and life and ministry, then it's something that we want to share. And so we have things from a, um, a volunteer training event to 
um, like four week Christmas curriculums to Easter lessons to an Easter escape room. Um, we've got lots of on screen games. So whether you're playing in person and your kids can't touch each other, you know, because you've got to be social distanced or you're playing on Zoom games that work for both of those settings. Um, it's been really fun in this season. Well, I say fun. It's been a little um, taxing, too, to try to figure out, you know, just like everyone mm -hmm. else, what's going to work, what's not going to work. But trying to come out with resources that are helpful to families and leaders in this season specifically. Um, and so we just released a brand new back to school um, prayer journal for kids. And so you can share it with your parents and they can print it off or you can print it off for them. But it's black and white, so it won't take up too much printer ink. Um, but it's just a seven day prayer journal that guides kids through um, specific prayer prompts for the beginning of school. And because I know, you know, I mean, just like churches, schools are all over the place, too, with whether or not they're meeting in person or meeting online or doing a combination of both. And um, it's hard to plan things as we head into the school year. But I figured if you can't plan, then just pray. And so we've got mm -hmm. that. That's a great resource, too. How about like other people contributing. I think that was your dream from the beginning, you know, but like how mm -hmm. has that grown? That's been so much fun. Um, I've got to make some great connections with so many different people. Um, some of them are leaders who also have their own children's ministry leadership blogs or family faith blogs. And some of them are just leaders who are really, really creative. Um, and so when I started out, I had about three people, three other vendors with me who were um, submitting resources and now, just about a year and a half later for the marketplace, um, we are pushing 20, 25 leaders who are sharing stuff. So it's been really, really awesome to connect with them and to be able to show off the things that they create and um, use. I mean, I've used <laughs> even some of their resources, you know, and recommended them to people in, in, in our ministry or with our students and kids, too. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. And I, you have stuff that's free all the time as well. Like when I go on there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you give it away like once a week on Friday and email that if people subscribe. But there's always things that people can get for free, too, which who doesn't yep. who doesn't like free? Right. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> Everybody yeah. loves free stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anything else you'd want to add about it or let leaders know about that if they're in children's ministry? Yeah, I'd say if you are creating something um, that you found successful, that your kids loved, that your parents loved, that you feel like someone else could replicate in their church setting too, um, then check out deeperkidman.com and you know, let's get in touch. And I'd love to help you share that with other leaders um, so that they can have the same win that you had in your ministry. Um, and if you're not the creative person and you're like, I just need more ideas, then check out deeperkidman.com to see, see what we have to offer. And hopefully you'll find something that will either spark a creativity, a creative idea in you, or that you'll be able to use as it is and, and run with it. I'm like the biggest fan of, uh, you know, other resources that are shared that then can be tweaked and, you know, you get something mm -hmm. that's 80% done, um, you know, yep. and then changing that. I feel like I rarely have new ideas. I just have like, you know, adjusted other people's ideas or, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I love it. And I think there's a lot of people listening who they've created something, a uh, class yeah. for parents you know, a document mm -hmm. for volunteers. I mean, like all those things, the more that people can share that stuff, the better, because let's face it, we don't have, even in, if it wasn't for COVID uh, ministry leaders, we don't have 35 hours a week to work on things like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. We got like right. maybe two yep. uh, or four if we uh, do it right. So starting, you know, not from scratch is, is great. So that's really cool that you've created that. It's fun to see different people share it. How, how else can people connect with you? They can do deeperkidman.com, but is there any other way they, they can connect with you on social or anything like that? Yeah, so Deeper Kidman is on Facebook. You can just search Deeper Kidman. Um, it's at Deeper Kidman on Instagram. We've got a Pinterest page, which is really fun to explore and look at if you've got some time. Um, you can go down the Pinterest hole. Um, so yeah, so in Twitter, we're on Twitter and YouTube. We've got some videos. So we're, we're just about everywhere. Not on TikTok, though. That is one, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, is one social media platform that I have not ventured into yet, <laughs> but yeah, me neither. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, deeper Kidman. Um, well, you'll find us. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast, for sharing that story, being, you know, open and vulnerable about what's going on with your staff and your family. Glad you and your daughter didn't get it, but even, you know, for your husband that you're, he's asymptomatic and your staff, that's, that's awesome. But I think it's just helpful for yeah. leaders to hear, you know, the journey that other churches are having. Cause obviously they're still wrestling with, do we meet in person? Do we not? When? What's that going to look like? You know, 
uh, how we do mm-hmm. it online, like all that stuff. So it's just helpful to hear other leaders. So I appreciate that and for sharing about Deeper Kidman and, and for coming on the podcast. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Quite a journey that their church had, obviously. And I mean, it's crazy to think they wouldn't even have known that he was positive if it weren't for the test. And some of the other people may not have known either. And that's part of the uniqueness that we have to navigate during this pandemic is the different kinds of experiences people are having and the decisions that we need to make as churches in light of that. So I hope that was helpful. And you know, hearing her talk about Deeper Kidman, if you serve in children's ministry, hope that was helpful too. A few action items I thought of coming out of there would be to create your church communication plan if someone tests positive, they didn't have that. If certainly if you're gathering in person in any way, outdoors, indoors, weekly, whatever it looks like, kids ministry, no kids ministry, create a plan. It doesn't even have to be a detailed plan, but what are we gonna do? How are we gonna communicate if someone tests positive, not just on our staff, but at one of our gatherings? Another action step would be to check out Deeper Kidmen, of course, and see the resources there, and maybe you'll contribute. Maybe you'll put resources up on that site. That would be a great thing. And then third, check out ministryboost.org, unrelated to this conversation that Brittany and I had, but referring back to the boxes in the beginning, in case you're interested in creating monthly or you know one-off special boxes to give to families at your church, you can check out the bundle and the source to be able to get those custom-designed boxes at the cheapest price. And you can get all the links and notes at nickblevins.com slash episode 202. But that's all I have for this week. So I hope it was helpful, and I'll catch you next time on the Family Ministry Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Nick Blevins Family Ministry Podcast. We hope this helps you maximize your church's potential. We would love to hear stories of how you apply what you've learned. You can do that by leaving a comment on iTunes or in the show notes at nickblevins.com.